Hey guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, Infinity Custom Works, Gary Dean Detailing, all the things. So today, check this out. <laughs> That's the next uh, Infinity Liner slash Versacoat 13 product, project. Uh, that's the next one that we'll be dealing with uh, starting tomorrow, actually. But today's video is because you all know that Versacote 13 and Infinity Liner, well, Infinity Liner doesn't have to be sprayed. It can definitely be rolled. Uh, you get a more uniform leveling and flow out with both products if you spray them. And that's why I really lean towards the spray application. But anyway, as you know, I've been spraying in the shop. Um, what I had done is basically I got some 20 inch box fans and basically I put two of them there and I shut the garage door on top of them and it worked great. It worked great. Um, while I was in here spraying, uh, the skis on this, uh, engine hoist and sling, it worked great to remove all of the, um, basically the overspray and the fumes from the situation. But I wanted to take it a step further and I wanted excellent ventilation. So I doubled the amount of fans and I built an enclosure. So what I wanted before I show you what's going on, what I wanted was to be able to store a contraption out of the way. I wanted it to be slim. I wanted it to be very functional. And so I should have done a how to build this video, but I just thought about it a little bit and put this thing together. But basically you want the suction to come out and you want it to be as great as possible to remove all of the overspray and the fumes in the air. So what we are working on is this ventilation system. Now it is not a complicated system. Uh, it is not yet complete. Uh, I am almost done. And then I thought, man, I should probably shoot a video because these people who are trying to spray Versacote 13 and Infinity Liner, they're gonna want to have something like this. You need proper ventilation because your respirator is your first line of defense. Getting out the bulk of the fumes and that kind of thing is the, well, I don't know that it'd be second, but it's definitely a major line of defense against uh, the fumes and breathing them in and all of that. So what you're seeing here is um, the top and, po and bottom are uncut eight foot sections of two by four. These are pressure treated, all of them. So this is a total of, let me think. So one, two, I had two pieces. So this is a total of basically four pressure treated two by fours. Um, I cut these at 21 and a half. These fans I got for $30 a piece at Walmart. Yes, I wanted the purple ones, uh, cause you guys know my colors are purple and green. So, um, I was going to paint the frame lime green. I don't think that's important, uh, especially because I bought pressure treated lumber. So if I'm spraying and it's raining, which may or may not happen because of the amount of humi humidity. Um, but if I'm spraying and it's raining and this contraption gets a little wet on the bottom or on the top or whatever, it's gonna be fine. Obviously it's electrical. You don't want your electrical getting wet, which is why all of the, I bought a strip cord, just a basic one. Uh, that way I had an actual switch for all four fans. So I'll leave them on high at all times and use this on off switch as the switch. Um, I will run the cables, uh, wire tie them all, make it all look nice, fasten all of that to the back. Uh, these are actually upside down right now. I'm going to flip this thing back around how it's supposed to be, and I'll give you more information. Okay, I got it flipped over. Um, this fan and that fan are brand new. These two are the ones that I told you I used already. And you can see they're a little dusty. I actually didn't put filters over them. I am going to put filters over them. And that's kind of like, I'm almost done with this thing. And I was thinking, maybe you guys would like to see how I'm doing this. So, okay. So what I did was I took, you can see the covers of them are over there. There's one, two, three, four. There's six screws where the, um, this is actually the front of it comes off. So I took the fronts of all of them off. 
Um, I did just find some random screws, nothing fancy, uh, but I put two screws in the bottom of each one, nice and tight. And on top, what I did was I flipped this one over. I marked the middle. I flipped it over. Um, basically, I mounted, I mounted the whole frame, okay, with screws. And then this is held in on top by the handle. The handle clips in right here. You notice I have them all still clipped in. But what I did was I, I unclipped them and took them out. Well, let me start with this, okay? So I got everything mounted up just like this. And if you'll see, there's lines in there where I marked. And then I marked the center of where these things were with the wood and with the plastic. So once that happened, I pulled this top wood off and then I pulled all of these handles off and I put two screws in each handle to fasten the top. And I did that so that I can still access, and you'll notice there's very little room still in there, but I can still turn the dials and adjust the speeds if I want to. I don't think I'm ever going to. I think high is gonna be where we're at. These don't exactly spin at 5,000 miles per hour, but, or RPMs or whatever you wanna call it, but. Anyway, so that's how I've got these things uh, fastened up here. They're all locked in. Um, they're not going anywhere. And then I space these out. Basically, it's perfect to run four fans inside this eight foot section and then put a two by four in between. I don't care that there's a little bit of space. None of that matters. But basically, I want exhaust coming out and nothing to be able to get back in. It's kind of where we're at. So. All right, so that's how I fastened all those. Everything is working and functional. Um, the next order of business, since I've got all of these fastened in, is gonna be to probably just put the covers back on and then mount the wiring, and that's pretty much it. But what I did was, these are 20 inch box fans, there are four of them. I got two pieces uncut of uh, basically two by four, in pressure treat. So two pieces for top and bottom. I then cut one, two, three, four, five pieces at 21 and a half inches. And I put it together just like that. So each of these top and bottom are eight foot uncut. I didn't even cut them. Each of these, and there are five of them, one, two, three, four, five, two ends and three center pieces. Um, I mounted these sideways and those long ways, but these are cut at 21 and a half inches. These are uncut top and bottom, and it fits in here perfect just like that. Like I said, I put two screws in the bottom of each one, and then I mounted the tops with the handle, and um, that's it. I'm gonna put the covers back on these now, and then once I do that, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how I'm gonna put a filter on the outside of these. All right, so I got my four quality air paint booth filters and I'm just mounting them to the backside of the, the rig here. Uh, they're supposed to be mounted so that the overspray hits that 3D section first, then through the green, and then there shouldn't be a whole lot extra, but what does get through does hit the fan. But this prevents your fans from getting all nasty and prevents a ton of overspray going out into the um, environment and that kind of thing. So this is best practice. Yes, I could have just thrown these fans in here, but as you saw the fans before, they were all dirty and gross and whatever it was sucking out of here was throwing it all in this area. And not that it really matters. I mean, you got this guy down here spraying stain right now anyway. You can see him doing it. Not that he gives a shit what is happening with the overspray, but that's what happens when you just spray outside is overspray gets everywhere. And I'm not down for that. I don't want it on my cars. I don't want it on my stuff. I sure don't want it on my customer stuff. So um, I will do whatever I can to make sure that not only I am safe inside and can breathe properly, um, and 
I'm going to, this whole Jeep is getting sprayed uh, in two days. Uh, I am spraying my daughter's car tomorrow in here. So uh, with that said, Tomorrow when I spray my daughter's car, I'm gonna basically see if this is an, I'm telling you, those two fans worked out great. This should be even better, but if this doesn't work as well as it should, um, and it's not filtering my air out for me to breathe uh, properly, I will build another rig for that door. So uh, the depth of this is about four inches uh, with the uh, front and back of the fan sticking out. So I should be able to put it along this door, but it's actually, this, this rig is for that door because it's gonna live over there on the wall. So if I have to build another one, I absolutely will. Um, I'll give you the recap of cost and all of that. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this pick right here because it has a thick shaft. I'm just poking a couple holes in the sides and then I'm taking uh, some, where'd they go? I have some, there they are, some, what are they? 14 inch, 11 inch cable ties. And I'm basically putting it in one hole, wrapping it around the fan piece and back through the other hole and tightening it up. I'm just doing one top, bottom, and side to side on each one. Um, remember, your fans are blowing that way, so it's gonna suck this into the back. So it, I probably only needed two wire ties, but uh, the cool part about these particular filters is that they're designed to not have to replace a lot. So they will basically take on a lot of overspray, uh, but you don't have to replace them regularly. Um, I ordered this tin pack on Amazon. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six left. So, yep, six plus four is 10. So that tin pack on Amazon was $55. So uh, I would recommend these. I was gonna go with these regular home AC filters, but I just didn't, I just wanted better. So I got real booth filters. So. 55 bucks on Amazon. I can link the uh, um, the, address, the web address for that so you can get those. But I'm going to go ahead and fasten this one. And then I'm going to get all my wiring all straightened out. And then I'll bring you back and, and give you the cost breakdown. All right, boys and girls. This rig is complete. Super excited. All right. As you see, I explained before five pieces cut at 21 and a half inches two two by four by eights not cut at all and then basically i used uh three inch screws uh two here two here so two on every post that's all uh that's all it needed i did use pressurized lumber in case it gets wet um those so i've got about 30 bucks after tax in wood um, I did use random screws I had laying around, so I didn't pay for screws, but if you were going to pay for a pack of screws, you could probably add in, I don't know, about $10. Uh, I used three inch screws, and then I used uh, one and a quarter inch screws uh, for basically fastening in all the wiring and stuff. So I've got all my wire managed, all tucked up nice and neat. Everything's all strapped down, tight. Um, I got my Everything's all plugged in. Got four good connections there. I do have two extra um, plugs which aren't gonna be used. So I can use that as the switch. I've fastened my wire at the top right here. Now this is not long enough for much. So I have this extension that I bought. It's a 10 foot grounded extension. Um, and so that actually is going to be used over here where I'll have to use that extension there to plug in right there. So that works out perfect. Uh, and if I wanna use it on this door, I can obviously just plug it in where it's plugged in now and we're good to go. So that's it all rigged up. I paid about 30 bucks for wood. You can estimate five to $10 for screws. Uh, I bought four of these fans, which are 30 bucks a piece at Walmart. 
So it's $120 plus tax worth of fans. Um, the filters, I told you, they are four quality air. And I got them on Amazon and this 10 pack was $55. So I used the wire ties to strap to the back or to strap the filters on. And that is the orientation in which they go. They suck the air into the filter, into the green filter, and then what's left goes out uh, with the fan. So that is how that's supposed to be wired up. I will remove all this crap from the doorway and show you how this will work. It's not light by any means. So the whole point of this rig, basically you want to put, you want to match it up with the track of the door. So right here and right here. Okay. That's pretty, pretty all right. And then we've got this here. I got this, uh, I had to put a pin in this door. Basically I use a screwdriver. So basically, boom. Just like so. And then obviously when it's plugged in, we will be able to, if I can get it, So plugged in, now there we go. Um, I could absolutely stuff a filter in there and stuff a filter in there or something. I may or may not, I don't know. I feel like most of, I feel like the fans pulling out is gonna direct any air that would go over here into the fan. So I'm not real worried about, you know, the crazy areas because the fan is gonna create that suction that's gonna pull everything out. But that's where we're at. Good ventilation. It actually is cooler in here that now that I've turned that on. I can feel uh, the ventilation sucking out some of the heat so anyway so that's what i have spent now four freaking hours building and grand total i've got about a hundred 230 bucks in this in this rig about 230 bucks so i got let's say 10 bucks in that cable 10 bucks in the strip cord 120 in the fans 30 bucks in the wood I have probably $10 worth of screws and wire ties that I use, maybe less. And then these filters are 55 bucks. So that's it. It's not complicated. If you guys want to build one of these to be able to spray your VersaCoat 13 and for it to filter out all of the nasty air and fumes that's what i would recommend right there so there's also you know obviously more areas for overspray and fumes to go out but like i said these fans create that suction that is removing air from inside here and so it is far more likely that the fans will pull the air straight to where they're at and it will filter through those filters than it is that it'll just fly out all these random areas. But again, if it does, it won't be much at all. And I feel great about this. And when I'm done using it, hit the switch, turns all of them off. I then can just unplug and move it straight out of the way and it will live over there on that wall or over there on that wall. So that's it. That is my filtration rig for spraying VersaCoat 
13 and infinity liner. All right, that's it guys. Uh, nothing super fancy, but I definitely needed some good ventilation in here. I'm getting bombarded with uh, Versacrit 13 and Infinity Liner jobs. Uh, everybody wants this stuff. It is the latest and greatest in paint protection, gel coat protection, um, ceramic coating, paint protection film stuff. Um, all in a clear coat. It's pretty amazing. So anyway, if you guys want to build one of these and I can help, let me know. My cell phone number is 813-846-4406. And um, my Instagram, I'll put that right here. It's gary.dean.35. But that's my fil air filtration rig for my brand new shop. We're going to see how this does tomorrow on the 2010 Hyundai Elantra. I'll be spraying with the First Coat 13 and some pearls. Uh, so I'll shoot a video on that. But um, if this is not adequate, I will build a second rig for the other door. But... Like I said, two fans was plenty when I sprayed my truck in here and I've sprayed six different ski bellies in here since then uh, just with the two fans and it was great. So at doubling it up and then putting more structure and filters on the situation I think is all I really need. But like I said, if I got to spend another 230 to get better filtration, we gonna do it. So anyway, uh, check out Versacoat 13 at detailjuice.com, it has its own category, so if you're looking for it, go to the shop tab. As soon as the categories are brought up, look for the Versacoat 13 category. We also put it in the ceramic coatings category as well. So um, if you're looking for it, that's where it's at. Some people couldn't find it uh, because, well, it had its own, its own category and they were looking for a ceramic coating, which it is, but it's more of a clear coat slash paint protective film spray on wonderful amazingness layer of force field goodness if that makes any sense so um yeah if you need some help building that let me know if not get on it because you're going to need it thanks for watching guys have a great day